we all want to strike down on that golf ball. To be able to make that ball first contact and then hit that divot in front of the golf ball, that ensures that you can get a clean strike every single time. Now there's a few questions that I get from players all the time. I want to make sure that I answer those for you so that you can hit down on the ball without chunking, without thinning, or without losing distance. Let's go and get started. Now be sure to hit that subscribe button. I have tons of great videos coming out this year. I don't want you to miss out. The only way you're gonna get notified when I come out with the new great videos is if you click that subscribe. Also hit the thumbs up. That really helps us to grow the channel and post your comment below. I'd love to hear from you. The number one question that I hear when I talk about hitting down for players who tend to pick the ball clean. And let me see if this is a symptom that you have to know if this is the right video for you. You're trying to hit your iron. Today here I have a longer iron, I have a five iron. But whenever you're hitting your irons, you find yourself kind of standing up out of the shot. You're losing your posture. You tend to flip the club a little bit. You tend to, to get the ball and kind of roll it around to get it just on that one perfect little piece of grass so it's sitting two millimeters higher than all the rest of the grass, or you feel like you're not gonna be able to hit it very solid. Maybe you find yourself on some hard pan or some really tightly mown fairways and you're thinking, man, this is really tough to hit this. I feel uncomfortable over the shot. Well, if those are the things that you're feeling, this is gonna be a perfect video for you. What I wanna get you guys to feel is when you're on a really tightly mown fairway, when you're on a bare lie, you're thinking, oh, great, this is perfect. Perfect. Now I don't have any grass in the way. I can really hit this shot nice and solid and right on the middle of the green, just like we see with the pros doing that. And I think that can happen if we get the right idea. The number one question I get with this is, well, if I hit down, won't I chunk? So a lot of players, and this is a very good question, we try to hit down a little bit more, but when we do that, sometimes we hit a little bit behind the golf ball, we're chopping down a little too steep, and all of a sudden we start to get some chunks. Now a lot of this comes from a flipping motion from the wrist. So if I do this incorrectly and I flip with my wrist, we'll see my left wrist is breaking down, my right wrist is pushing the club forward, and you'll notice that when I hit the ball, my club shaft is splitting my forearms already. Now that means that I'm releasing the club too early, and if you're releasing the club too early and you try to hit down, you probably are gonna chunk the ball. The right way to release the club would be to have a good angle of lag and to keep this left wrist bowed. And what I want you to visualize is what we call the straight line release in the top speed golf system. So if I take a ball going down my target line and I just put a ball about four feet or so in front of the ball that I'm hitting, I want to visualize me releasing to this golf ball out in front. So I'll put that right down my target line. So whenever I'm swinging in my mind's eye, what I'm visualizing is that I'm releasing those wrist angles to this golf ball out in front. I'm not releasing to the golf ball I'm hitting, and now the club head's splitting my forearms. I'm getting forward shaft lane here, the club's leading the way as I come through contact, and it's not releasing until out in front. Now, one of the things that makes this a lot easier is what we call the impact glide. And the great way to visualize this is when I get my hands low to the ground, Let's imagine that I get my hands low enough and my club head is already on the ground. So this would be crazy extreme, exaggerated bow, club head already on the ground, tons of forward shaft lean. Well, watch my hands. As my hands turn back up and in, that club glides perfectly level with the ground for about a two foot area there. This is one of the reasons that the pros are so consistent. They're getting that club to come down into the ground and then level out and glide very smoothly with the ground so that they could hit a golf ball anywhere along this area and still hit it pretty solid. Now the only way to do this is to make sure that first I get low, get my hands low enough to where they can turn up. If I'm losing my posture and flipping, I don't really have anywhere for my hands to, to turn up because if I turn my hands up, I'm gonna swing right over top of the golf ball. So that's the first piece. I gotta get low enough to make this happen. And then I gotta feel like I'm rotating everything open to this release ball out in front. That way, when I open up my body, my hands and arms can move back up and in to allow this to happen. That's a great thing for you guys to practice. That's something that you really wanna work on. So when you're setting up this shot, let's go ahead and hit four or five golf balls feeling like I have my release ball out in front, I get my hands really low, and then I'm driving up and in as I come on through the shot. Let's try one out and see how we do. There we go, nice shot. That would be in the right center of the, of the green. Nice divot there. We can see that I didn't chunk that ball at all. It was nice and clean, but I came in very shallow and released on out in front. Now, another common question I get is, I can't stop falling back to the right. What do I do to get my weight to the left so that I can hit down and through this golf ball? And a lot of times 
players struggle with this because they feel like in their downswing, they're falling back away from the target. They're getting farther away from the ball this way. They can't really reach the golf ball, so they kind of have to flip and scoop to get the ball up in the air from back in this position. Or everything's getting so much farther behind the golf ball and the weight's going so far back that they're gonna chunk behind the golf ball. If that sounds like you, I have a perfect solution to this. And it's actually the opposite of what most people think. Most players, when they think about keeping left, they try to set up more to the left. They try to get their weight on their left foot. They try to keep their weight on their left foot in the backswing and then keep your weight on your left side on the downswing so you can hit down and through. It actually is more difficult to keep your weight the left the entire time. If you wanna make sure that you get your weight to your left, we have to first transition our weight to our right side or our right leg and then shift our weight over to our front foot. The weight shift is exactly that, it's a shift. If I load up my right foot, if I put, feel like I put some pressure on my right foot, it's gonna make it easier to drive off this foot and get all my weight over on my left foot. If I load up in the backswing on my left side, the natural tendency is you can feel that you're too far in front of the golf ball. The natural tendency is now gonna be to push off this left leg and then fall back away from the target. And that's gonna get you falling back to the right, having a tough time hitting the ball. And again, chunking when we're doing this. A great way to feel this in the golf swing, let's go ahead and set up with our normal address position. And I want you in your backswing just to lift your left foot up a little bit off the ground. And then as you come through, go ahead and get everything up to where just the right toe is touching the ground on your right foot. So that would look something like this, a little left foot lift, and then I'm gonna shift over to my right foot. Now that doesn't mean that I have to sway really far with my body. My body can stay fairly centered over top of the golf ball, just barely to my right side, when I do that little heel lift and come on through. What I don't wanna do is just keep everything way over here left and then end up pushing off that left foot and falling back. So do those reps, get that weight shift, and that's gonna help you to hit it a lot more solid. Let's go ahead and try another one out. And I'm gonna feel that same weight shift. I'm just not gonna lift, lift my heel is the only difference. I'm feeling the same sensation. My heel just isn't going into the air when I'm making my normal swing. Now, one thing I'll look at, my flight scope X3 radar, is recording all these shots. It's measuring how much down I'm hitting in the golf ball. This is a great tool that you can use yourself too, and I'll show you with the divots here. But on that shot, my angle of attack was negative 2.9, and that's exactly where I want it to be with a five iron. It can be anywhere between negative two or three degrees all the way up to negative five or six degrees, and I'm in a pretty good zone as far as how I'm hitting down. Now, if you don't have a $20,000 radar just laying around your house, there's another way that you can check this. If we're in normal turf conditions, so if the ground is fairly soft, you're gonna see divots about like this, kind of a dollar bill size divot. If anything, I'd like to see maybe just roughing up, up the turf with the longer irons rather than taking these big divots. If I'm coming down and I'm chopping through the turf and I have these big, thick, thick deep divots on normal turf like this, I'm hitting down too much. Remember, negative two or three degrees isn't very much. Just barely hitting down into the golf ball. If you imagine a clock face, one minute is about six degrees of difference. So we're talking half of one minute. That's how much I'm hitting down into the golf ball. That little tiny bit of an angle is all that I'm hitting down into the turf. Now, if you're hitting in wet ground, it's just rain that day. You're hitting a higher lofted wedge with more loft, a pitching wedge, a nine iron, something like that. It will dig a little bit deeper down in there. You'll hit slightly more down with those shorter irons. But as a good rule of thumb, a nice dollar bill size divot is the way to go. If you're doing that, you know you're well on track. Now, one of the other questions I get is I just can't keep my posture. So I'm trying to hit down and through this. We've talked about how we don't want to fall back to the right, but what about the player that's standing up? If you're looking from the down the line view, their chest is getting farther away from the golf ball. Their hips are coming in. And now we have to flip to be able to reach that golf ball and I just can't get a divot because I feel like I'm standing up and having to flip at the golf ball. There's some great drills here to stay in your posture. The first one I would do is put this club across your shoulders and as you go to the top of the backswing, I wanna feel like that club is pointing somewhere down toward the ball or just outside the golf ball. As I come on through the swing, as I, this would be just after contact when my arms are released in front, I wanna feel like that club and my shoulders again are pointing toward the golf ball or just outside the golf ball there. If I start to feel like I lose my posture, now all of a sudden you'll see how my shoulders are rotating level with the ground instead of being down in their posture. Now another great tip for this is to make sure you don't fire the right arm too early. What should be happening is as we make our downswing, our body opens up, 
our right arm stays bent and that right arm is releasing through contact, but it doesn't get fully released until our ball out here in front, our straight line release position. So when you're firing that right arm, imagine that going toward this golf ball out in front rather than me standing up and releasing this right arm way too early. Now I'm gonna be casting, losing my posture and flipping at the golf ball. So when I'm visualizing that straight line release, imagine the right arm being a little bent at contact and that club releasing on out in front. Let's go ahead and give that a whirl. That way we can hit down and through, just like we were talking about. There we go, hit that one absolutely perfect. Wind's pushing it a little bit to the right, but I couldn't hit that one much better with a five iron. And again, if we take a look at my angle of attack, we're gonna see a negative five angle of attack. So again, anywhere three to six, I found is well within the range to hit fantastic golf shots. Now this video is gonna get you well on your way to making that divot in front, hitting down and through the golf ball without chopping or thinning, falling back or standing up. We're gonna be well in our posture, make things a lot simpler. But how do we build on this from here? Now one of the things that makes this a lot easier is getting in a good spine angle. This is what I call the stable fluid spine from a top speed golf system. If I can tilt slightly away from the ball, and now when I rotate in the backswing, I'm rotating around my spine angle. As I'm coming in the downswing, I'm rotating around my spine. So my spine isn't moving around right and left. I'm not falling back. I'm not staying to the left. This makes it very simple where I can just rotate around my spine, turn back and turn through. Golf gets a lot easier. I have an awesome video for you that's gonna go over what the stable fluid spine is, how you can put that in your own game and get you started on your way to being much more consistent. I'm gonna play a preview of that here in one second. If you wanna see that full video, just click the card that pops up on your screen or the link down below in the description. You'll get instant access and you'll start hitting a lot of those really clean shots. Let's go ahead and get started. So what is it that allows us to have consistency in the golf swing? And what is it that allows that consistency to fall apart and create some bad rounds? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video today. Let's go ahead and get started. Everything that's, that happens in the golf swing is initially dictated by what happens with the spine. So if we're looking at a skeleton, you know, my spine's in the center of my body and everything else in my body is attached to my spine. So my shoulders are attached to my spine, my arms attached to my shoulders, and then my arms are gonna be actually swinging the club. Now, when I see players that are really struggling, those guys that are hitting it out in the woods right, they're hitting in the left, then they have a few good holes, what's happening is their spine angle is changing. As they go to the top of the swing, maybe they have a reverse pivot, spine's angled back, falling back to the right, but there's a lot of inconsistency in that. And what happens is, as good athletes as we all are, the number one fundamental in golf, correct, keep it nice and stable, but fluid, we're gonna be able to hit those good clean shots time and time again. And that's what I'm gonna show you in this series of videos. Henrik Stenson, top five in both driving distance and accuracy. Roy McIlroy here, playing some of the best golf that anybody's ever played. And you can see just how stable.